guys, uh, let's begin. So, uh, examination and mannequins, right? So, what you will see in these stations, examination and mannequins, you have got roughly these three kinds of stations mainly, right? So, what we have got, number one, we have got the combined stations, yeah? We have got the combined station, then we have got the purely examination station, we have got teaching stations as well, all right? So, combined station meaning what? You have got history, then you have got examination, then you have got the management. So, you have to do three things. How much time you have got? The time is still eight minutes. You're not having more time. You still have got eight minutes only for the exam, right? For that particular station. So how much time you're gonna spend in the history? So you're not gonna take full history. What you're gonna do? You have to take focused history depending on that particular scenario. So I would say two to three minutes, that's it. Two to three minutes you should be spending uh, in the history. Now, the thing is we do not have any bell, any bell after two minutes or three minutes. There will be only one bell in the exam in eight minutes. When the bell is gonna be, it's gonna be after six minutes. So who's gonna tell you it's two minutes or three minutes at the moment, no one. So what you are supposed to do. So when you're practicing these scenarios, practice it like a combined station, practice it like a history examination and management. Uh, don't do it like, okay, let's do history and management separately and examination separately. It is not going to be of much use. What you do, you practice it as a combined station. So then only you will get the idea like, okay, this is roughly my two to three minutes. Now I should be moving on to my examination. So that is really, really important. So history, two to three minutes. Examination, I would say three to four minutes. Again, depending on the scenario, right? Depending on the scenario. Sometimes you will see the patient is talking a lot. Patient is just talking, talking, talking. Then, of course, I cannot tell the patient to stop, isn't it? Then I have to be very careful in asking more questions. I have to be very, very focused in terms of my history. And then I have to be even more focused and go for very much relevant examination as well. So that's the key in this station. So make sure these two things, the history and examination, we are done in six minutes time. No matter what, you are done with these two things in six minutes time. So what we have got, management. Management, even if you spend last two minutes, that should be okay. Usually uh, when we're doing a history scenario, we used to say four minutes for your data gathering, four minutes for your management. That's what we say. But when it comes to the examination, when it comes to the examination mannequin station, uh, even if you give two minutes to the management, that should be enough. That should be enough. Now, how I'm gonna get the idea that in this particular station, I have to do the examination or I have to just mention about the examination. Will they be giving it to me very clearly? So what can happen is, see, uh, in, in these OSCE stations, you might see in the question what they have written, please assess the patient. See, what is the meaning of assessment? So what is the meaning of assessment? Assess the patient. Assessment simply means history and examination. Right? So assessment means history plus examination. That's what happens, right? So am I gonna do the examination or am I gonna just mention it? That's the key. The thing is when you enter into the cubicle, you just have to see the room, just scan the room quickly. Do they have any mannequin in the room? Do they have any instrument for the examination in the room? If yes, it's an examination station. If no, in that station, they are just expecting you to do the history and mention about examination, and maybe the dear examiner will give you the finding. That's how it is, right? So it may not be very clear outside the cubicle whether it is an history station or you have to do the examination. So when you go in, just quickly scan the room and get an idea, okay? So history, two to three minutes of history, three to four minutes of examination, make sure this much, these two parts are done within six minutes. And the last two minutes we are spending on the management. The candidates usually, you know, when they fail these station, you know, what's the main reason? The reason is not like they don't know the history or examination and the management. The reason is the time. The problem is they're taking full history, they're spending too much of time in the examination, and then there is no time left for the management. And that's the reason a uh, few candidates, they fail, they are not successful in these stations. So what you are supposed to do, a focused history, relevant examination, and please do the management as well. All right, so within six minutes, history and examination, last two minutes, management. Now, you might see some station where we don't have history, it's just the examination. So that's absolutely okay, you can do the examination, and what you can do, last two minutes, you can spend on the uh, management. That's absolutely, absolutely okay. 
right? Now, <clears throat> when it comes to teaching station, we have got many, many, many teaching stations as well. So what are we supposed to do? The task is your student has missed the classes for teaching. Uh, this particular examination, like teaching a breast examination, teaching testicular examination, teaching a per speculum examination, uh, teaching BLS, adult BLS, pediatric BLS. So anything, anything it could be. All right. So you have to go in the cubicle and teach your student how to do the examination. Right. That's absolutely, I mean, easy. That's absolutely okay. So you may get two kinds of teaching stations. Number one, they will say assess your student, assess your student and give him feedback. So what you are doing, you will have six minutes plus two minutes, right? So what you can do, you can teach the student for six minutes and the last two minutes, you can assess your student and see if they are making any mistakes. If they're making any mistakes, you can correct them. All right. Sometime in the teaching station, the task says, don't let your student do the examination. Don't let your student do the examination. So it means what? You have got complete eight minutes to teach your student, right? So please read the task carefully and do the things accordingly. Okay, so teaching station, if they have asked you to assess your student, so make sure you assess them and give them feedback. So six minutes you teach, last two minutes it's for assessment. However, if the task says, do not let your student do the examination, then you have got complete eight minutes to teach them. Now, teaching station is not like you have to finish them or finish them all. For example, you got a teaching station of, uh, say anything, say joint examination, like knee examination. So you've got a lot of things to cover in that, in, in that particular station. Joint examination is a look, feel, move, and then we have got some special tests as well. And teaching, I would say it takes more than 15, 20 minutes if you have to teach it to somebody. But how much time you have got in the exam? You have got only eight minutes. So what are we supposed to do here? So the thing is, you don't have to force yourself to finish these teaching stations. If you can, it's fine. If you cannot, that's absolutely fine as well. Okay, what you can do in the beginning, you can summarize it a bit. You can summarize them a bit. And then in the end, if you're not able to finish, that's absolutely okay. Because for example, I'm teaching a station, I need 10 minutes. And if somebody else is teaching, maybe that person needs eight minutes or maybe that person needs 15 minutes, isn't it? It doesn't mean we don't know how to teach, we know, but I might be needing a bit more or a bit less time in that particular station. All right, so that, that's how it is. And in teaching station, make sure whatever you're teaching, you're giving more importance to your student as well. You're giving more importance to your student, whether they are listening to you or not. Are you with me? Are you following me? Do you want me to repeat anything? If there is anything that you didn't understand, please do not hesitate to stop me. I'll be more than happy to explain it to you again. All right, so those are the things that you need to do in the teaching stations. So I'll explain a bit more when we go to the teaching stations, but uh, uh, expect these three kinds of uh, stations. Purely examination station where you might see patient is unconscious. So definitely you, don't, uh, you can't take history there. So you'll be having examination and then the last two minutes management and management might be most probably gonna be with the examiner, right? But most of the time you will see the what kind of station we have got. We have got combined station and mainly the teaching stations. All right, so this is your basic structure. How much time for uh, what particular area you need to spend. Now, so for example, you've got a combined station. Let's go through a bit more about the combined station. So you have got a combined station. How I'm gonna start? Combined means history. So before you start history, what you do? You say hello, yeah, you greet the patient, hello. You introduce, your, uh, introduce yourself, hello. My name is this, right? And identify. May I know your name and age, please? So what you do, you greet your patient, you introduce yourself, and you identify the patient. So that's what you do. After that, what you're supposed to do, you will take history, right? So I'm talking about a station, which is a combined station. So how are we going to go about these stations? So first I'll greet my patient, I'll introduce myself, I'll identify my patient. So after that, I'll start taking history. Whatever the station is, you just take history. Okay, how much time are we going to spend on history? 
how much time we're going to spend on the history? I would say not more than two to three minutes. Then what happens? Now you're supposed to do the examination. But before you start doing the examination, what you are supposed to do, you need to explain a few things to the patient. You need to explain the examination or the procedure that you're going to do. Okay. For example, you're doing, let me take an example. Let's say you're doing lower limb examination. Yeah, lower limb neurological examination we are doing. So what you're going to do? You will tell the patient that I'm going to examine your legs now. So that is the explanation, a brief explanation of the procedure you need to do. Because whatever you're going to do, you need to tell the patient that this is what I'm going to do. So explain the patient that I'm going to examine your legs. Exposure. Now, whatever exposure you need for that particular station, you need to mention it. So if you're doing lower limb examination, I'll tell my patient, uh, for the purpose of examination, I would like you to undress below your waist. You can have your briefs on. Yeah, so that's exposure. If patient is wearing the shorts, I would say, thank you for your adequate exposure. Then chaperone. Who is this chaperone? Chaperone. In the exam, it is understood that examiner is your chaperone, right? <clears throat> So examiner is your chaperone. So you do not have to ask for the examiner. You do not have to ask for the chaperone. It is understood that examiner is your chaperone according to the blueprint of the exam. Simply tell the patient, I have a chaperone to ensure your privacy. I have got a chaperone to ensure your privacy. Now, sometime in a teaching station, a student will ask you, for example, uh, can the patient relative be the chaperone? The answer is no. The chaperone has to be from the medical team only. Chaperone is for the patient's safety, privacy, but at the end of the day, it's your safety and uh, uh, safety as well. So make sure you always mention about the chaperone. So whenever you mention about exposure, the next line mention about chaperone as well. Now position, make sure you put the patient in the proper position, right? Because you know, some of the examination you're doing in sitting position, some of the examination you're doing in lying down position, some examination lying on 45 degree couch, some examination lying down, a patient is lying down on the flat couch. So make sure you put the patient in proper position as well. And then what you do, you will take consent from the patient. You will take consent. May I proceed? And then how are you going to proceed? Then you will proceed after that, right? Now, the contraindications. See, we do not have contraindication in all the stations, right? But in some stations, you might have some. For example, let's take an example. You are uh, doing fundoscopy. So you need to prepare the patient for fundoscopy, right? So how do you prepare the patient for fundoscopy? You need to dilate the patient's eye. Then only you can do the uh, fundus check. However, if your station, if your patient has got acute angle closure glaucoma, are you going to dilate the patient's eye? Are you going to put the dilating agents? The answer is no, because it's going to make things worse for the patient, right? So you will avoid dilating the patient's eye. So that is the contraindication. Again, as we go along, I'll let you know what kind of contraindication you should be looking for in each and every station. All right. Another thing, you know, before we start any station, we ask one more thing to our patient. If you have got pain anywhere, if you have got pain anywhere, if patient says I've got pain, tell the patient I'll be gentle and quick at any point of time. You feel uncomfortable. You want me to stop. Let me know. I will stop my examination. Right. So that's the thing that you need to say. So, for example, if I'm doing lower limb examination, how I'm going to say it to the patient after taking history. So first I'll greet, I'll introduce myself, I'll identify the patient details and I'll take history. Now I'm done with the history, I'm starting the examination. What I'm going to tell you to my patient, I'm assuming my patient is wearing shorts. Okay, so how I'm going to explain the procedure. So, uh, Jacob, now I'm going to examine your legs. For the purpose of examination, I can see you are adequately exposed. Thank you for that. I have a chaperone to ensure your privacy. May I proceed? Yes, doctor. All right, do you have got pain anywhere? No. Perfect. I'll be gentle and quick. At any point of time, you feel uncomfortable or you want me to stop, let me know. I will stop my examination. All right. And then what's going to do? You will start your examination. So this is how it's going to be. Okay. Now in this example, up to you, Kimberly, just remember one more thing. So you give any instruction you give to the patient. Any instruction to the patient. It should be in patient's language, right? 
after doing every step, every step, we need to verbalize the findings. What I mean by that, see, when you're doing the examination, you have to give the instruction to the patient. When you give the instruction to the patient, it should be in patient's language, right? So for example, I said, uh, I'm gonna have a look at your legs. So that is an inpatient language. But when you do the examination, you need to verbalize it as well. Now what happens is in a lot of exams that you have given in your life, what happens is uh, you get enough time in the later part of the station to explain your case, to present your case to the examiner. But the case is different here in this exam. So what you do, you have to verbalize then and there. So whatever you have found in that particular step of the examination, you will verbalize it later on. So once you're done with the step, you verbalize it. So any instruction to the patient in patient's language, but when you're verbalizing, you can use medical words as well. When you're verbalizing, your verbalizing is for the examiner. You're verbalizing it for the examiner. So you can use the medical words as well. So any instruction to the patient, go slow, patient's language. When you're verbalizing, you use medical words and you can go even fast as well. And you have to verbalize negative findings as well. What I mean by that. So you're doing the inspection of lower limbs. Don't say there are no findings on inspection. Just verbalize the negative findings. Just verbalize what are you looking for by saying, I'm looking for redness, swelling, hair loss, pigmentation, a shiny skin, scar marks. So say these things. You cannot just say inspection, no finding. No, you need to verbalize. There is no redness, no swelling, no uh, like pigmentation, no shiny skin. So this is how we have to go about it. Okay, so this is your basic structure. I mean, uh, in any combined station, right? So any examination station. So before you do the starting of the examination, you need to mention all these points, right? Exposure, chaperone is a must. Make sure patient is in the proper position and you always take consent as well. If there's any contraindication, you will rule that out as well. If you're doing a scenario on a mannequin, if you're doing a station on the mannequin, they have got very clear introduction that uh, you do not talk to the mannequin. There is one mannequin you can talk to that is sim man, but you will never talk to the mannequin. So in the exam, if you're doing eye examination or ear examination, so what's going to happen? They might give you an eye mannequin or ear mannequin. So they are only for the examination purpose. They are only for the examination purpose. But you are not going to talk to the mannequin. You will talk to the patient. You will give every instruction to the patient, but then the examination will be done on the mannequin. So that's clear instructions again from their side. Please do not talk to the mannequin. Okay, so this is a brief idea about the introduction of combined stations. Okay, all right.